Hello everyone, let's explore the new Rise 8.0 with Cloud Assembly. So once you come to Cloud Assembly, you can see Blueprint, Infrastructure, Extensibility and the Marketplace. Marketplace you will get once you will have uh, your account, VMware account locked in. We'll explore more on Blueprints. Let's see Extensibility. It's more on your subscriptions, some of libraries and the activity action whichever is going on. Once you come to infrastructure, you'll have project, cloud zones, Kubernetes zones. Uh, so cloud zone is something uh, you integrate your vCenter and you have create one certain zone more like a fabric group. Project is something like a business group, you can say that, where you can have a sets of users who will be accessing it and you'll have cloud zones inside that, blueprints and your deployments, all those things all together. Coming to uh, flavor mapping, it's more like uh, t-shirt sizing, medium small and extra small, or you can create your own custom ones. Image mapping is all the images or templates what you have on-prem or on the UV center, you can import it based on locations and regions and use that for your deployment. Again, you have a network profile. So there are a few changes in the network profile. Uh, it's pretty much the same thing. Let's log into this and see. It's pretty much the same. But the way it has been laid out now is a little different. Once you click on network, um, click on the port groups, you can have multiple networks how it was left before. Uh, so just select that network and you can view all the settings. You have few extra options like support for public IP, default for the zone. So you can do a lot of other options. So you might see some different, different name terms or terminology now, but uh, it is uh, pretty much uh, the same thing but the terms have been changed uh, once you select this go to your manage IP ranges you will get this the how you will be were able to see all the reservations so click on default you will be able to see how many IPs are being utilized from the IP range whatever we have given so right now I have not used anything Close this. so you can see now a lot of tags all around here uh, with a lot of uh, objects, whatever you create, you will have to add a tag or you can add a tag to it and you can just use that. This is storage profile. Let's discard this. I don't want to do any changes to this. Uh, you have, I have a standard one. Uh, so if you go to tags, whatever tags you have given to all the objects during the creation, you'll have all of them. Under resource, you'll get compute. Similarly, in the resource, you'll get all your objects, including Kubernetes. You can definitely see. You can add an existing Kubernetes with the integration of PKS. You can deploy one, add an external one, so you can do a lot of things. Activity, you can see all the requests, which is ongoing uh, activities or requests which are in progress, event logs. And you have connections. Inside connection, you have cloud accounts. So cloud accounts are the accounts which you connect to your other services like AWS, Azure, GCP, NSXT, NSXV, VMware on AWS, vCenters. So these are the these are the standard connectivity. Uh, other than this, uh, you do have uh, integrations. If you jump to integration, you have by default your VRA built one. You have so many things: PKS, GitHub, GitLab. You know now you can directly integrate your GitHub and do infrastructure as a code so we will do explore that in coming videos but you can do a lot of uh, integrations now with all your new objects onboarding i have not explored it much maybe i will explore it and maybe i can tell you more on this one so on upcoming video blueprint i'll cover a little later deployment is pretty much the same what we were having in 7.6 uh, you have the filter option. You can see a lot of options on the left uh, with HTML5. This was a very very good thing which they have introduced. Blueprints. We do have an existing one. Before I jump to blueprints, let me show you some other things. Click on that. Come to all the tiles option. Let's go to service broker. Yeah, let's explore service broker first. So service broker is nothing but the user's interface you can say where uh, users have certain access to like catalogs, deployments, content policies and infrastructure. So deployment you can see what all things have been deployed. Uh, Container policies are the general policies or uh, everything what you want to share, what you don't want to share and email notifications and other configurations. 
if you come to infrastructure you have pretty much the same the projects cloud zones uh, cloud accounts so whatever accounts you have given access to whatever the integration you have given access to a certain user will be having it completely based on the access whatever we have provided right so pretty much the same things let's go back to orchestrator first as you guys are aware that from 6 7.5 itself they were trying to go to html5 and 7.6 was completely html5 based and this 8.0 is just html5 we don't have even a plugin where you can access it access it in an old traditional way using java um, maybe i'll make a separate video for realize orchestrator how to use it so that you understand because it's pretty complex now but much better way to use it you don't have to jump across other screens to do that when talking about code stream mm -hmm. code stream is pretty much you know cicd pipeline you can say you can add your integration with my gates my kubernetes you can create pipelines you can have multiple pipelines for your applications you can execute pipelines wherever you want to execute manage your executions and have your dashboards so you can do all these integrations and it's it's really interesting maybe an entire video series on this will be quite fun to explore more on this let's go back and explore something more it will be nice because you can use infrastructure as a code and you can use your kit it, it's gonna be fun as you know the blueprint now is completely revamped and the major change what you can see is in a blueprint area of the way we used to create and you cannot see that xas uh, software component and all those stuff right now right so once you go to blueprints let's create a blueprint let's give any name testing to or for video let's rub it and let's let me create testing too Oh, it's require a project but i need to assign it to some kind of a business group you can say that or a project. so a few of the terms have been changed do understand that great you don't have a tenant kind of a style now anymore those all concepts have gone um now you can see right there right it is a uh, in a yaml format um, you can see on the left side it is cloud agnostic you have machines load balancers network security groups you can write your own yaml scripts on the right hand side it will get executed for aws you can see now you have instance you have volume s3 buckets you have route 53 you have so many things inside that again under gcp you have machines and disk uh, features under kubernetes you have k8s and namespaces under microsoft azure you have so many things blob storage instance sql key vaults app services dns so you have so so many stuff inside that azure itself and uh, when you talk about the configuration management you have ansible and puppet to directly integrate it's really fun to explore this we are 8.0 so once you export a vSphere machine you do not get that old traditional way of you know uh, where you customize your images define it custom properties and all now you have everything to be defined and can you see that yellow dot the bulb kind of a thing so once you select that uh, you will have all the optional parameters where you can define adding of a disk images flavor customization spec so you add your flavor so you can you remember that we had small extra small and all those stuff so it's a string you will get some description here what you want to add so you can define those parameters here that what you're looking for and based on that you will uh, have to deploy so I'm also not expert in this because this is quite new. Uh, I need to go in depth of how to create a blueprint. So I'm I'm exploring it more and more. I'll keep in touch with you guys. Maybe I'll make a separate video how to use it more. Um, you can add a folder name. So if the following blueprints will get built, where exactly this or folder name in which it will get built to. So let's remove this. Let me try to add an image. Uh, let's explore let's add an image and see that uh, based on that we can do anything else scroll down customization specs you have seen reference image 
So once you have added this reference image and you select that, you will see all the templates which is on which is in your on-prem, right? So all the templates you can see. Just choose that template and using those templates it will get deployed. So guys, that's good, pretty interesting to see. A lot of stuffs are new and I think we have to put a lot of efforts to understand, explore it more because uh, there is everything new here. You do have a versioning, you do have test, you have deployment, so you have multiple versions for each of them. So if you see that CentOS 7, if I expand this, you can see version 1.0. So you do have a versioning here. That's a pretty interesting piece, right? And uh, we do have to sync a repo, so there is a repository also. So a lot of things to explore. We will make a separate video, as I said before. So guys, this is pretty much a quick overview for this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and leave your comment. And if any questions you have, uh, please feel, feel too free to comment that. I will try my best to reply. I know a few of the videos I was not able to reply, but definitely if anything I can help you with, I can. Or we can even have a kind of a video session where everybody can have a common con call. And we can discuss more about VRA 8.0. Thank you guys. Thank you for watching this video. Um, in the next video I'll make on PKS as well. Have a great day.